It was June 18, 1978. It had only been weeks since high school graduations commenced at Revere High School in Bath Township, Ohio, when an 18-year-old man was walking down a lonely street. The man was hitchhiking, trying to get home after attending a rock concert at Chippewa Lake Park. He was young and ready to have a great night. A vehicle pulled alongside him, illuminating him with their brake lights, before coming to a complete stop. A sense of excitement rushed over the young man as he made his way to the vehicle's window. Inside was another young man, also a recent high school graduate that was ready to realize his true self. The driver offered the man a ride to his house, promising him exactly what he wanted, a good time. He had a house all to himself, he said, and there would be plenty of alcohol to go around. The hitchhiker enthusiastically accepted the offer, wondering how he could get so lucky. As a matter of fact, it was the luckiest night of his life, or so he thought. You see, the hitchhiker's name was Stephen Hicks, and the man he just got in the car with was Jeffrey Dahmer. All right, and in this video, we're going to talk about Jeffrey Dahmer's first victim, Stephen Hicks, in a new video series I'm calling Ride or Die. Now, if you stick around to the end of this video, you'll get to see this beautiful view. But to get there, we're going to have to talk about some seriously dark stuff. So hop on the back of my bike, hold on tight, and let's get riding. So to get Hicks in the vehicle, Dahmer told him that they would be able to go to his house and, quote, have a few beers, end quote. And he wasn't lying. Dahmer's parents were going through a divorce and he would have the family home all to himself. It'd just be two dudes hanging out, having a blast, and with no parental supervision. When you're a young man, you couldn't ask for a more attractive scenario. For Hicks, this was right up his alley. However, for Dahmer, he was more attracted to the situation in a sexual sense. What really enticed Dahmer to pick up Hicks in the first place was him seeing Hicks standing by the roadside all bare-chested. Hicks agreed to have some drinks with Dahmer in the seclusion of his home. So he got in the vehicle and they were on their way. At the house, music filled the air as the two men indulged in conversation together. Dahmer had it in his mind that he would eventually make sexual advances towards Hicks, but things didn't go the way he wanted them to. Over the course of a few hours, they had their fair share of beer, but to Dahmer's dismay, his newfound crush started talking about girls and how much he liked them. It was at this point that Dahmer knew any sexual advances he made towards Hicks would be totally rejected. Hours had passed, and Hicks was beginning to slouch in his chair. It was time to call it a night. He told Dahmer that he was ready to go, but Dahmer didn't want him to leave, and he never would. This would be the last moments of Hicks' life. And right now, I think it would be a good time to comment. I mean, could you imagine how this night was going for Stephen Hicks up to this point? I mean, this would be a dream scenario for a lot of young men. He just got back from a rock concert with probably enough adrenaline coursing through his veins to freaking kill an elephant. And he just met a new friend that wants to hang out with him and drink with him while they listen to music. And that's obviously something that Hicks was a big fan of. They have a house all to themselves. They're home alone. There's no parental supervision whatsoever and when you're a young dude this is like the holy freaking grail of opportunities man that freedom you know what i'm saying there's no anxiety nothing like that you're not going to get in trouble for anything and he's hanging out with a new buddy someone that could be his best friend some you know i mean this this opportunity was just handed to him and you know somebody that could be his total bro until the day he dies which unfortunately wouldn't be much longer <sighs> As Hicks sat in his chair, Dahmer approached him from behind and struck him with a dumbbell. Not once, but twice, which rendered Hicks unconscious. As he fell to the ground, Dahmer proceeded to use the bar of the dumbbell to strangle the young man to death. Hicks was only 18 years old. Holy smokes, would you just look at that? Jeez. Dahmer then proceeded to act out his sexual fantasies. 
He stripped off Hicks's clothes and began to run his hands over Hicks's body and eventually masturbated while standing over the other man's corpse. The next day, Dahmer would move Hicks's body down to the basement and begin the dismemberment process. Now, here's a part where I'm not sure on the timeline because Dahmer tried to dispose of Hicks's body twice, but this is so crazy that I have to mention it. At one point, Dahmer had trash bags in the back seat of the vehicle he was using that was filled with Hicks's body parts and he was pulled over by the police. They saw the trash bags, asked him what was up with those, and Dahmer said that he was upset about his parents' divorce, decided to go out for a late night drive, and figured he'd take the trash to the dump. And this right here just goes to show how downright manipulative serial killers are. Dahmer's parents getting a divorce is something that truly impacted his life. It's something that really did affect him. And right here, he's using it as nothing more than an excuse to get out of trouble. Oh no, officers, uh, uh, I'm just upset about my parents' divorce, but uh, ignore the dead body and the trash bags in the back seat. But, hell, who knows, man? Maybe his parents' divorce was really weighing on his mind that night, and that's why he decided to drive around with a dead body in the back of a vehicle. After the initial dismemberment of the body, Dahmer then buried it in the backyard of his family's home in a shallow grave. Several weeks later, he'd dig the remains back up, strip the flesh from the bones, and then dissolve the flesh in acid and flush it down the toilet. As for the bones, he crushed those up with a sledgehammer as much as he could and then scattered them throughout the woods behind his family's home. After the murder of Stephen Hicks, Dahmer admits that his urges were in his mind every single day from that point forward, but he believed that he could keep them under control and that he'd maybe gotten the worst of it out of his system. He wouldn't commit another murder for almost 10 years. So let's think about that for a second. My goodness, look at that. How unlucky do you have to be, man? You know, I mean, it had to happen to someone, but imagine being this poor dude, in this case, Stephen Hicks. Not only are you a serial killer's first victim, but you're the victim of a serial killer who then goes on to be on a hiatus for nearly a damn decade. God damn! While Dahmer was busy trying to dispose of their son's remains, Hicks's parents were concerned, but thought their son simply stayed out late and would be home any minute. But as days passed, they began to fear the worst. They were worried to death and would do anything to get their son back home to them. They set up a reward of $2,500 for any information that would lead them to their child. And that was a lot of dough in 1978. As a matter of fact, that would be a $10,000 reward today. Life was not easy for the Hicks. I wish I could say that it was. They held on to hope as long as they could, but they knew something was really wrong when their son wasn't home for Christmas. The Hicks talked about waking up after their son's disappearance as Christmas was approaching and walking into his bedroom, hoping to see him there. But of course, he wasn't. That's when it really set in for Richard Hicks. He wouldn't let a Christmas go and hurt us by not being home, he said. Eventually, the Hickses hired a private investigator, but all of this was for naught. They would be left with ever-diminishing hope, wondering where their baby boy was. It would be 13 years before his family and friends would have any closure when Jeffrey Dahmer was finally arrested in 1991. Investigators would eventually go on to find the young man's teeth and bone fragments scattered around Dahmer's childhood home. The Hicks were finally able to lay their son to rest in a private funeral. During Dahmer's Ohio sentencing, Martha Hicks addressed the courtroom, saying that her son, quote, had a smile that could keep him out of trouble most of the time, but went on to say that her son had never met a monster like Dahmer before.
Check that out. Eventually, she would go on to sue Jeffrey Dahmer and his family for $50 million, stating negligence and failure to prevent their son from killing. In the lawsuit, Martha stated that Dahmer's parents should have known their son was deviant and destined to cause injury and death to others. The Hicks went on to win the lawsuit, but whether or not they actually saw any monetary compensation is unknown. Martha Hicks passed away in 2008, and her husband of 50 years, Richard Hicks, passed away shortly after in 2010. Stephen Hicks was only 18 years old and was described as being warm, friendly, and compassionate by friends and family alike. He was a recent graduate of Coventry High School, which, after learning of his death, implemented the Stephen Hicks Scholarship. As a matter of fact, in Martha Hicks's obituary, it was asked that if you wanted to send any monetary donations to the family, send it to the Stephen Hicks Scholarship Fund. And right now I'd like to talk about something positive, something that Richard Hicks said made him really proud of his son, Stephen. Hicks said that he had taken his son on a hunting trip during which Stephen had shot a rabbit. Stephen was, quote, as proud as he could be, then bawled his eyes out, end quote. Richard Hicks said that he was proud of his son for showing such feeling towards the animal. This was the last time he'd go hunting with his son. And here we are. Oh my goodness, check out that view. Ain't it sweet? I'm going to have to bring y'all back around here at dusk sometime and let you see it then. It looks even better. But my goodness, check that out. Wow. And you know, on the way here, we talked about a young man who lost his life way too early. It really puts stuff like this into perspective. We're so lucky to be able to see stuff like this, to have this be part of our lives, to enjoy stuff like this. And thank y'all for coming along on the ride with me. Y'all were great. I can't wait until we do it again. If you liked it, let me know in the comments. Let me know how you feel about this new video series that I'm playing with. I, I really enjoy it. You know, I get to combine riding my bike, which is one of my passions, and working on tall core, man. Love it. This is a perfect combo. So if y'all like it, have any advice, suggestions, opinions, whatever, leave them in the comments section below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 50K by the end of the year. All right, thank y'all for going along on this ride with me. I had a freaking blast, and I hope you did too. Until next time, my friends.